What's going on, everybody? Happy Thursday. Just a quick reminder, tomorrow back with overtime, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Go about an hour. I'm trying not to go longer than an hour to an hour and a half per overtime now. Just because I know a lot of people like to rewatch or don't get a chance to come on and then they go to watch it again. It's just a long episode. We're going three hours on to it. So about an hour, no more than an hour and a half, tomorrow night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <clears throat> um, what not, sometime late Saturday night with some stuff I'm just getting rid of. It'll be uh, cheap starting off, uh, what do they call them, sudden deaths on there. All right, guys, let's talk about repacks. To me, when I hear the word repack, now, I'm going to say in the last three years, when I hear the word repack, I automatically think legal scam. And let me explain this. It's because you're buying into a product with a chance to hit something, one of these chase cards, and it's legal to an aspect. So here's the catch. How many of these repacks have a solid checklist of every card that's in there? Not many. Very few, and I mean most of them are what I call the homemade repacks. And... If they are, I'd probably say 1% to 2% out there might have a full checklist of what's in them, which you don't know what you're going to get. I would say 90% of the time you're going to get garbage. That is one of the biggest you know, things out there, at least when I'm opening boxes, which I know is a gamble. I have odds on what I'm hitting, but a guaranteed auto, stuff like that there. But these repacks, they're pricey. And when you see some of the stuff coming out of them, whether they're the $25 repacks, the $500, the $1,500, it makes no sense. There's probably literally two or three people I will buy into their repacks. Because one, I know they take the average value of the cards, and we're just going to say it's like $50,000 if it's somebody doing something big. Or I'll use somebody small doing a $500, no, doing $5,000 into it. He might do 20 packs at like 220 to where there's some buffer room into it, but there's not many people out there. I, I could say literally there's only three people I'd buy in their repacks, and that's because it's pure trust that goes into it. Some of these repacks, you're lucky to even get 50% of your money back into it. They throw out all these crazy chase cards, but you have no idea how many packs there are. Nothing. They'll sit there. Some of them advertise. I have 50 cases, six boxes a piece, and they'll show you six chase cards. What's all the other cards? Well, I'm about to go through some of this stuff. And one thing I've noticed here recently is all of these base cards that are PSA 10s and 9s. I'm talking about Zion Prism, Zion Optic, uh, Morant Prism, Morant Optic. Acuna Tops Update PSA 10s, Soto PSA 10s, all that stuff that I show you guys in that chart, they're all going in these products. Why? Because when they make them, they're going to put it at that high value because they want to maximize profits. And at the end, they know by the time they sell that out, you get the card, it could drop another 10% by then. A lot of the values are dropping. If people are out there telling you that it's safe and uh, do all this stuff, tell you values are dropping. I showed videos to where, you know, even the big cards that are sought after are dropping. There will level out one day, but it's not anytime soon. Um, I'll talk more about that probably tomorrow night where I think things are going to be at. I could be totally off, but I'm being very, very careful on what I purchase. All right. So let's go into some of these repacks here. Again, I am not a fan of repacks. There's three people who do it I will buy into because they have value, and I'm not going to get, like, a 9-5 freaking Zion Prism rookie. They make sure you're getting good cards. I'm not saying it's saying a good card. Because somebody might call it a good card or getting a 9 Luca Prism rookie, but I'm getting stuff that will be, I guess you could say, safer value-wise. But you can see all these pictures that people put up here. Let's just, uh, I think I have some of these clicked up. All right, let me pull this one down. But if you go on eBay, they're everywhere. Not everybody's on eBay. I've seen people throwing out stuff in SGC slabs that they're trying to say sells for the same price as PSAs. 
They they still are clueless, a lot of these guys, on how to price their stuff. Very, very bad. And the most I'll hear it shows, well, yeah, I, I can only see what a PSA 10 did, but an SGC 9.5 should be close, right? Okay. We're not talking vintage, guy. <laughs> All right, let me pull this one down. All right. Boom, here we go. All right. Oh, these, $100. You get two graded slabs, right? Bam. Lamello Gem 10 Chase. Sounds good, right? Come down here. And all I said is Chase Cars a Gem Mint 10. Lamello Ball Graded Slab. Does that mean it was graded by Gem Mint? I mean, who gave it a Gem Mint? I mean, just look at it. But you're talking... What was it, $60 for this? $100. $100. Just, it's just shocking when you look through this stuff. Here is another one. You can buy them at $100. You want to look, Chase cards. J.K. Dobbins. Really, a Chase card? C.D. Lamb? I mean, these are okay cards, but not what I want to chase. Here's probably their big one, too. A Baker Auto. That's a rookie year from Flawless. Another Dobbins. Swift. Here we go. There's all kind of stuff you're going to get into your little pile there, too. A hundred dollars. Two packs per. Four autos guaranteed hit and bonus two. Two packs in each with two autos per pack. Will also come with a bonus card, auto graded RPA big rookies and a guaranteed hit. Only twenty available. So right now, if I bought all twenty of these, I'm spending two thousand dollars, and these are my chases. I mean, these two here would have to pretty much be guaranteed into it. It's times like this when I see these and I want to buy all twenty, just to see if that Baker and that two is in it. Wouldn't that make for a video, huh? Alright, let's go to new another one. This is one I thought was interesting. There's the major picture here, right? Look at this. 149. This is the NBA Gold. Same pictures. NBA Platinum. And when I say same pictures, you see that R.J. Barrett? PSA 10, I believe that is, right there? Dead center. Look at some of this stuff. Dylan Carlson. I believe that's the Chrome. I mean, when you look at this stuff, this is all the base stuff. Look, back there, Zion Optic. Bichette Tops. Or Tops Chrome, whatever. That's Tops. But when you look at this stuff, it's all the base stuff that people graded out and they're losing money on. So we'll go back to this one here. Same exact picture. Barrett's over there on the left. You can see there's the two Carlsons and stuff. So, I mean, what's exactly in it? Because you're using the same pictures. I mean, I saw a ton of uh, HGA slabs. I think these are in here. HGA slabs all through it. But then I come down here, next one. There's what I want to get in my pack. A Gem Mint 10 Tua. Mosaic Blue Chips. Judy Auto from Mosaic. I mean, I just looked at this stuff and I just started laughing. Because this, to me... It's just a way for them to get rid of their stuff and get full value or more out of it because that chase cards are in it. We don't even know what the heck chase cards are in this. All right, moving on. This one caught my eye. So we got $1,500 to get in this repack. $1,500. How many of these cards do you really think is worth over $1,500? 9-5, rookie Herbert in case, possibly. Jacob Eason? No. Lamar Jackson? How about all these overproduced selects and prisms? I mean, I think that one burrow is a camo. Rookie card. I, I don't know what that's worth. I don't really know. Or we can go with the Spectra Dual Auto of Burrow. And I believe that's uh, T. Higgins. How about the Radiant Rookies? Of Hertz or Claypool. Spectra. 
Herbert. I don't know if that's the one out of 99 or not, or if that's the Midnight Black without really digging into it. How about a Herbert Downtown? Nowhere. Let me see here. Yeah, his does not tell you how many there are. There's all the people you can get. Oh, you can also get hobby boxes. Look, NT, Mosaic, Origins, Hall of Fame list. But nowhere do we know how many total are in it or pure checklist. But you want $1,500 per. There is another one, $25. This was a cheap one I found out there. Let me go over onto this. Just look at this stuff. Okay, there we go. A ton of just mosaic. It was probably retail packs and stuff. I mean, you're looking at a debut Mosaic Hertz base. It is stuff that was totally overpopulated that year. I mean, anybody want to have any rugs? Red? How about an Aguilar? LeBron? I mean, when you go through and look at this stuff at $25 per, I mean, who's giving these guys money? There's one sold. Somebody actually bought one for $25. I won't feed my money into this stuff just to open it and then show them because it's just not worth it at all. But it's just bad. I mean, I swear I saw one on here that had... Um... Then Project 2020's in it, but I might not have kept it on here. Let me just go flip back through. It ain't that one. Was it this one? Is there Project 2020's in this? Nope, none in there. All right, let me flip this off real quick. All right, let me go back. This one? Yep, all right. So years ago, Leaf had a buyback. It was pretty decent when stuff was cheap. The biggest one everybody knows about is Hit Parade. Now, if you notice, as time goes on, Hit Parade loses their value. I still think Hit Parade is okay, but I won't ever touch it at starting price. I wait till they slash prices. But when you look at like Hit Parade, no complete checklist on just tells you key players. But, I mean, you can't get some cool stuff into it. Usually you see one of these maybe per two or three cases, depending on how many make, like a Wander Franco. Makes you wonder why it's not graded. Trout, pretty cool looking, but it's out of Inception. Pujols, I, I, I do like the Pujols, I ain't gonna lie. Oops, click too many times, there we go. Little four autograph there, you got Griffey on to it, highlights with Big Frank, Cal, and Ricky. This here draws you into it. Huh, sketch cards. But, tons of stuff out there repack-wise. But what I, like I said, what I've noticed now, I've seen a ton of anything from Zion rookie year forward, Burrow, Herbert rookie year forward, stuff like that. All through this stuff. Nines, tens coming out. Ah, uh, what is the one? Is it Break Kings? Go Google Break King videos. I think it's a repack. It's called Break Kings or something like that. You guys will see what I'm talking about. And these boxes are expensive. And the reason they justify the expense on us because of these big chase cards out there. But when you're getting like 20%, 30% value back on something you're spending $400, $500 a box on. Woo! And it's a repack. It's not an actual hobby box. Repacks you think you're going to get better cards in, but it's just not. Uh, I'm one to say that I stayed away from this stuff for years. I mean, back in the day, like 15, 16, people put out good repacks. There was very few that put out full checklists. And somebody did a video not too long ago in a repack. And I was trying to remember who it was. And they showed this checklist. And I looked at it and I said, my gosh, that half the stuff on there is such high pop count, it's dangerous. That by, if that guy chooses to say three days to mail it to you, we'll say it takes three to four days to get to you. So that's already a week, plus a narrow weekend's involved. And just say you want to auction it on eBay. You're talking two weeks. I mean, 
some of that stuff is just keeps floating down, 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 five, ten dollars a week. I mean, by the time you list, you could lose another twenty dollars on a hundred dollar card. It, it's ridiculous. But guys, let me know what you guys think of repacks. I'm curious. I, I see it, you know, not really with tunnel vision, but maybe I am, and I just don't know it. But overall, I'm not just talking about one person as a great repack. I'm talking overall repacks out there. What you guys think about them? I, I honestly, I stay far away. I see them all the time floating on like whatnot, eBay, um, different breakers make them up and stuff like that, and just crazy. It's just a way for them to unload their inventory they can't sell and are not going to throw on eBay. Why? Because they're afraid somebody's going to do a return on eBay 69 days later and somehow get their money back and then they get the card back at, you know, uh, say 20-30% of the one that it was sold for. Insane. But, all right, I wanted to touch this real quick uh, just to show everybody some stuff that I've been noticing out there. Just if you're into repacks, be very, very careful. I thought about one time frame within the last two months of buying some of these. And just an example, that one that was like $100 a pack and there was 20 of them. Buying all 20 to see if I got every one of those hit cards on there. And what I was going to do was buy like 5, 5, then 10. All like days apart just to see if they could catch it or not. And see if all those came into it or not. It would have been curious. But alright guys, take care. Have a good one. See you on overtime tomorrow night. And maybe possibly if you guys hop on to Whatnot, it'll be a quick one on Whatnot late Saturday night. Probably like, oh, I'm guessing like 11 p.m. Eastern or maybe even later. I'm going to try to hit on more towards the dead of the night. All right, guys, take care. Have a good one. See you all later.